Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the podcast. And today I'm going to give my review of Monday Night Raw. Starting off the evening, we have a Gunther segment. Gunther comes down to the ring, grabs a microphone. He mocks Damian Priest, says he doesn't apologize for what he did last week. Gunther says that Priest is a wannabe champion. He also mocks the Judgment Day by calling them street trash. After that, Gunther then calls out Priest. Priest comes down to the ring. Priest and Gunther get face to face. Priest then attacks Gunther. Officials come down to the ring to try to stop the fight between Gunther and Priest. Moving on from that, we go into our first official match of the night. It's a number one contender match for the Intercontinental Championship. It is Dragunov versus Braun Breaker. I thought this was a great match, man, especially to start Monday Night Raw. It was a back and forth matchup between Dragunov and Breaker. With Dragunov hitting a running knee on Breaker. Dragunov and Breaker then both exchange in the middle of the ring with Dragunov keeping the pace of the match. Dragunov then hits a power bomb on Breaker for a near fall. Breaker then gets up, hits a Frankensteiner off the top rope on Dragunov for a near fall. Dragunov then hits a Death Valley driver on Breaker off the apron. But Braun hits a spear on Dragunov when Dragunov is running off the apron to the outside. Referee sounds for the bell, and your winner of the match is Braun Breaker. Breaker is now the new, new number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, and he will face Sami Zayn at SummerSlam. Hats off to Braun Breaker for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Lyra Valkyrie. I might, might be pronouncing this wrong. Lyra Valkyria versus Sonya Deville. Uh, it was a good match, man. It was a back and forth matchup between Valkyria and Deville. With Deville keeping the pace of the match, Valkyria then hits an Enziguri. Starks then attacks uh, Valkyria, which allowed Sonya uh, Deville to hit the finish. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match is Sonya Deville. Hats off to Sonya Deville for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we have a Nikki Cross vignette that was played for the Wyatt family or the Wyatt Six or Six, if you want to call that. Um, I thought this was great, man. I thought these, I, you know, me personally, I think these vignettes from the Wyatt family have been absolutely awesome. Ever since Bo Dallas came back into the fold as Uncle Howdy uh, with Monday Night Raw. It just brought a lot more spotlight to Monday Night Raw, in my honest opinion. Even though Raw was firing all cylinders before uh, Bo Dallas showed up, I think you know what they're doing right now with celebrating Uncle Howdy and bringing in new characters of the Wyatt Six, uh, Wyatt Six family, um, and bringing in like you know, you got uh, Eric Redbeard. He came back. Um, obviously, he has a lot of allegiance to the Wyatt family. He was there for the very beginning of the Wyatt family. So to see that, Dexter Loomis is also a part of the Wyatt family. Uh, new stable now as well. Uh, Joe Gacy as well as Nikki Cross. And I thought this video vignette package, if you will, that was played for uh, Nikki Cross last night was awesome. I, I think uh, the production and the just the all, all, around, like all around package of the Wyatt family, what they've been doing here as of lately has been awesome. The attacks on Chad Gable, and then you had Nikki Cross come out to the ring, and she's handing Michael Cole different videotapes of different vignettes that were played, whether it's from Nikki Cross or Bo Dallas or Uncle Howdy, so on and so forth. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to what's going to happen next with the Wyatt Six uh, stable. I think it's a great thing for Monday Night Raw, and uh, it definitely keeps things intriguing now that Uncle Howdy has been back with WWE. Uh, moving on from that, we have a CM Punk segment. Punk comes down to the ring, grabs a microphone, tells the entire crowd last night that he is now medically cleared to compete. After that, Punk calls out Drew McIntyre. McIntyre shows up. Punk then goes after McIntyre, but Punk is stopped by officials. McIntyre then mocks CM Punk. Adam Pearce is here as well. He comes out to the ring. He announces that it will be official CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam, but Pearce also announces that there will be a special guest referee for this matchup, and that special guest referee is none other than Seth Rollins. A um, couple things about this, man. Number one, it's great to see CM Punk now medically cleared to compete again. He's been out for quite a while. Um, this match between McIntyre and Punk at SummerSlam, man, it might actually steal the show. This is going to be a top, top main event matchup between both McIntyre and CM Punk. And now having the addition of Seth Rollins in the mix of this matchup just makes things a hell of a lot more interesting for this matchup between McIntyre and CM Punk at SummerSlam. Uh, moving on from that, we have a six-man tag team matchup. It is Xavier Woods teaming up with Otis and Tazawa versus Final Testament. I thought it was a decent match. It was a back-and-forth matchup with Woods, Otis, and Tazawa keeping the pace of the match, but Cross ends up hitting the finish. 
pins for the three, and your winners of the match are the Final Testament. Hats off to the Final Testament for getting the win in this matchup. After the match, Gable and the Creed Brothers attack Otis and Tozawa, and then the Wyatt Six family are here, or Wyatt Six, if you will, or Sick, Six, whatever you guys want to call them. Um, Uncle Howdy ends up showing up as well. He ends up hitting a Sister Abigail on Chad Gable in the middle of the ring, and then they go into commercial break. Like I said earlier, man, the stuff that Uncle Howdy's doing right now in the Wyatt family, I, I think it's great. I, I think it's awesome. It keeps people, un it's, it's unpredictable of what they're going to be doing and the route that they're going to be going on. I mean, obviously, there, there's a little, you know, storyline here, if you want to call it that, between the Wyatt family and Chad Gable. I don't know how that's going to play out. But again, like I mentioned earlier, the Wyatt family is definitely keeping things very interesting on Monday Night Raw, to say the least. Uh, moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Pete Dunn versus Bronson Reed. Uh, this match actually didn't even take place. Sheamus comes out to the ring. He attacks Pete Dunn as well as Bronson Reed. And then Sheamus ultimately hits a bro kick on Bronson Reed. And like I said, the match actually never even took place. It looks like Sheamus has some unfinished business here with Pete Dunne and Bronson Reed. After that, we have Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio coming out to the ring. Rhea Ripley calls out Liv Morgan. Liv is here. She's in the crowd. She has a microphone in her hand. Liv talks about SummerSlam, the match that her and Rhea are going to have for the uh, WWE Women's Championship. Liv says that she has feelings for Dominic Mysterio, but then Dominic Mysterio ends up grabbing the microphone and says that he is done with Liv Morgan and that he hates Liv Morgan, so it looks like Dominic is going to have still the allegiance, if you will, for Rhea Ripley. I, th I thought this was great, man. I think the storyline here between Rhea and Liv Morgan is great, and Dominic has been playing a great hand into the storyline between Rhea and Liv Morgan. Rhea comes back from injury now. She's a humongous baby face in the storyline between herself and Liv Morgan, where I could see, you know, I mean, the way the SummerSlam matchup can go a lot of different ways, man. I mean, I... I don't know if I'm going to do my preview predictions or not for SummerSlam, but I, I will say this. Even though Dominic aligned himself back up with Rhea Ripley, that's great. But I'm not going to sit here and say that Dominic Mysterio might not still be the wild card in this storyline. Looks like there's some, might be some conflict of interest yet. So maybe he, you know, Dominic Mysterio is kind of playing into Rhea Ripley, but who knows? Maybe Dominic Mysterio got attached to Liv Morgan and he just wanted to play it off as if he really does hate Liv Morgan. So... I don't know. I would still believe Dominic Mysterio might be the wild card in the situation here between Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. But needless to say, I'm definitely looking forward to this matchup between Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan at SummerSlam. And I'm hoping that Rhea Ripley uh, becomes the new women's champion and holds the belt again after she had to relinquish the belt due to injury. So I'm, I'm all for it, man. I'm hopefully Rhea Ripley pulls out the victory over Liv Morgan at SummerSlam and becomes a new women's champion. Moving on from that, we go to our next match of the night is Selena Vega versus Zoe, uh, Zoe Starks. I thought it was a good match, man. It was a back-and-forth matchup with Zoe Starks keeping the pace of the match. Shayna Baszler then attacks Selena Vega ringside. Carter and Chance come down to the ring. They attack Shayna Baszler, which allowed Selena Vega to hit the code red on Zoe Starks. Pins her for the three. And your winner of the match is Selena Vega. Hats off to Selena Vega for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that. We go into our next match of the night. It is the main event of Monday Night Raw. It is Jey Uso teaming up with Sami Zayn versus JD McDonough and Finn Balor. I thought this was a good match. I thought it was a really good match. Back and forth matchup between both teams with JD and Finn keeping the pace of the match. Sami Zayn then hits a springboard moonsault to the outside, taking out McDonough and Finn Balor. Carlito then attacks Sami Zayn ringside with the referee being distracted. Zayn then gets up, hits a blue thunder bomb in the middle of the ring. Jey Uso then hits an enziguri. Jaden McDonough then hits a Spanish fly in the middle of the ring. Baylor then goes to the top rope, hits his coup de gras off the top rope. Zayn then gets up, hits a haluva kick to the, in the corner on Jaden McDonough. Jay Uso then hits a Uso splash, pins for the three. And your winners of the match are Jay Uso and Sami Zayn. After the match, Braun Baker comes down to the ring to hit a spear on Sami Zayn. A couple things I want to talk about, man, before I get out of here with this Monday Night, Monday night Raw review. Number one... I know some of y'all that probably are going to listen to this podcast today are going to be like, what the hell is this? You know, all this time, you know, this guy's been covering AEW Dynamite and covering Collision and NWA Power and so on and so forth. Well, and I and I will be the first one to tell y'all that I did say that. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. I did say that I probably would have, probably wouldn't cover Raw or SmackDown because I had a hard time with the scheduling of both Raw and SmackDown with just my own personal schedule. But with that being said, this is a trial run. 
And what I mean by that is, is I want to see what this does. I want to see what Raw does moving forward. I think Raw right now, and like I told you guys before, this is not something where I'm... How do I put this? This is not something where I'm looking into the fact that, okay... Don't, you know, don't strike where the iron's hot as far as, oh, you, you know, you're just now coming into Raw now because Raw is getting better. No, that's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do here is to look at both shows. Because a lot of people, like, people have to understand, man, a lot of the guys, men and women that do this podcast stuff for pro wrestling, they do get a lot of flack because a lot of these people, some people in the pro wrestling community, you know, as far as podcasters are concerned, they get a lot of flack due to the fact that they, you know, cover this show or cover that show or cover this show. And... The world, you know, the tribalism word just gets traveled around a lot because this person's only covering this company or TNA or AEW or WWE. Like myself, for the longest time, I was only covering AED, uh, AED, AEW. And the reason why I only covered AEW is because it fit into my personal schedule. But I want to see how Raw and SmackDown play out. So, and speaking of SmackDown, I will be doing a review of Friday Night SmackDown. Um, I thought the show last night for Raw was great. I thought it was a really good show from top to bottom. Uh, and like I told you guys before, even doing the AEW reviews, man, I think Raw has been firing on all cylinders. And I think AEW is severely playing catch up with what Monday Night Raw and SmackDown are doing. I mean, we can just go down the laundry list if you want. I mean, number one, the production value of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown is vastly different than what AEW and Collision have brought to the table. Absolutely. The video packages, the vignettes. I mean, they're leagues in their own right now with WWE compared to AEW. So AEW is definitely playing catch up right now, you know, and other news that I got from Monday Night Raw, which some of you may hear, may have heard or may have not heard, so I'm just going to give you guys the breaking news if you guys haven't heard yet. The news that I got retaining to WWE was the news of supposedly, and this is speculation at this point, that MVP Tamina and Bobby Lashley will be leaving the company of WWE. Now, there has been a lot of heavily speculation that both Bobby Lashley and MVP are trying to go over to AEW to reunite the Hurt Business stable that they had at one time with WWE. That's still up in the air at this point. From what I understand, is it something that you know Bobby Lashley and MVP, MVP might possibly entertain? Yeah, but to be honest with you, I mean, the one thing I will that I do know is that Bobby Lashley himself said that once he does leave WWE, or if he does leave WWE, he still wants to wrestle. So that leaves options open, whether it's New Japan, AEW, or TNA. And to be honest with you, I'm all for if Bobby Lashley wants to come over to AEW. I am. But the problem is, is where do you fit him into the fold, number one? Number two, the roster for AEW right now is so badly, severely bloated that the ro- some of the people that are on the roster that Tony Khan has personally signed to AEW, we've yet to see them in action and yet to see them even wrestle for you know AEW. For example, Camille, who's been signed, I believe, with AEW since February, and we've yet to see her inside of an AEW ring or any kind of video packages or vignettes from Camille. And it's gotten so bad with Camille as far as her tenure in AEW is that she's actually taking independent dates right now so she can wrestle. So, I mean, like I said, I'm all for Bobby Lashley wants to come into AEW and wants to wrestle over in AEW, but I don't know how you fit him into the fold on a roster that's already extremely bloated as it is. If I was someone like Bobby Lashley, or even MVP for that matter, I don't know how what the relationship was with TNA when they were there, but it's definitely something that I would entertain the fact that Bobby Lashley or MVP do happen to leave WWE, that I think it would be better fit to be in TNA. You know, obviously Bobby Lashley has some history with TNA as well as MVP. Um, Bobby Lashley is also a former TNA world champion, so I just think, you know, the way that Bobby Lashley wrestles and the way that he, you know, and what he brings to the table and in trying to reunite the, the, you know, the her business, obviously Shelton Benjamin is, I guess, technically a free agent as well. Uh, you know, I would also put Shelton Benjamin into the TNA landscape right now because TNA for all intents and purposes is firing on all cylinders. Uh, obviously the work relationship they have right now with WWE is a hell of a lot better than what they have with AEW and it's benefiting both parties. And I mentioned that multiple times when it pertained to NXT working with TNA, it is definitely panning out for both companies. Um, you have, you know, TNA talent showing up at NXT. You have NXT talent showing up, showing up at, you know, TNA. I believe uh, Wesley rejoined with the Radicals. Um, or not the Radicals, the Rascals, if you will, or whatever whatever stable that was that he was in. Um, he ended up showing up there with, uh, in TNA. So, obviously, you know, that that's panning out. That working relationship right there is working out a lot and humensely for both NXT and TNA. And it's paying off humensely. 
for both companies. So as far as Bobby Lashley, I mean, if you know the fan of me, yeah, I would love to see him go over to AEW. I don't want to. I don't really see him going to New Japan. Um, but to be honest with you, I'd rather see him in TNA. I, I think Bobby Lashley MVP would be great in TNA, um, and it keeps a lot of doors open for both Bobby Lashley and MVP to go over into AEW. I mean, uh, to TNA. AEW right now has a lot of shit to figure out. And obviously, this is a Monday Night Raw review. And the only reason why I'm talking about AEW is because there has been speculations, like I mentioned earlier, that Bobby Lashley and MVP uh, might go over to join AEW. So, But that's still yet to be seen. But as far as Raw and, and, and why you guys are, might be wondering why I'm covering Raw, like I was talking about earlier, this is just a, you know, to me, it's a trial run to see... If I, you know, if I can do Raw and figure it out in my personal schedule and stuff like that, and I had some extra time last night to actually watch the show, enjoy the show, and take notes on the show to give you guys a podcast today. And, uh, you know, obviously there's fans out there that watch my podcast or listen to my podcast, which I do appreciate, that are, you know, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown fans that probably want my perspective. They, Some of them might, some of them don't, probably don't even care if they want my perspective on Monday Night Raw, but... Um, it was something that I wanted to entertain. And I know I mentioned earlier that, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to cover Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. It's not because I like AEW more than the main roster. I've mentioned, I've told you guys multiple times, I have no tribalism between either company. I like both companies. It was just a personal schedule thing for me to try to watch Raw and SmackDown. Now, with that being said, if SmackDown or Raw or Raw and SmackDown really, you know, pan out and it fits into my schedule, then I will continue to keep covering Raw and SmackDown. Absolutely. Um, but as far as the show last night, I thought the show was really good, man. I mean, I, it's hard to argue, even as a wrestling fan in general, like I'm I'm taking the tribalism out of it for any fan. It's hard to a hundred percent knock what Triple H and the the company over there in WWE are doing right now. If you say that that company's trash or their talent's trash or this, this, that, and the other, I mean, you're not a fan of pro wrestling. I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm keeping it a stack with y'all. There's no way in hell you're a fan. The production value of WWE and the doors that they're opening right now, obviously, I mean, you look at their next PLE being SummerSlam live next Saturday at the Cleveland Brown Stadium. I mean, it's good, and the card is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. I know a couple matches on the card that are going to be great. Ray Ripley, Liv Morgan, great match. You got CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre with the special guest referee being Seth Rollins. You got Bailey versus Nia Jax for the, for the other women's championship as well. You got Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa. I mean, you, you can't get much better than that. You got Damian Priest versus Gunther at SummerSlam. I mean, the card is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. It's going to be a great night. And that's the, one of the biggest things I'll take away from, besides, you know, from w, and separate WWE to AEW is the presentation value, man. The presentation and that WWE is a global brand. I mean, they just had recent events overseas, obviously in France. Uh, they did a backlash, I believe, was in Puerto Rico. It was a big deal for WWE to get into these international markets. And right now, AEW is not doing that. AEW is staying within the States, besides Wembley, that they do every year. But eventually, that's going to get old. You know, with all due respect to the fans over there in Wembley and stuff like that, doing these pay-per-views in the same location every year, it gets stale, it gets old, and the well has run dry. You know, and there's people probably within the states that are looking at looking at an opportunity to have all in in the states. I know Tony Khan was inter, you know entertaining possibly having a stadium show in the states. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. But again, you're you're playing second fiddle. WWE has been doing this consistently for a very very long time. Now, credit AEW's only been around for a few years, but I mean, again, they're going to play catch up. And some people are like, oh, we'll give them, a, you know, give them some slack. WWE's been around a lot longer. I get that. I, I get that. I understand that. But there are some issues with AEW right now that is alarming. You know, they're still in TV talks and TV rights deals, which I don't know how that's going to play out. You know, the rumor that I got last night is that TNT supposedly matched Amazon's offer, from what I understand, for you know having the NBA on TNT and how this might hinder AEW. Well, AEW might get that might not get as much money in their new TV rights deal as they thought. So it, it could definitely hinder the TV rights deal between AEW and Time Warner and Warner Media. So, I mean, everything's up in the air right now. But as far as Raw is concerned, and I'm going to head out of here in a couple minutes, but uh, Raw was great, man. I, I To me, I really enjoyed the show. I actually had time to actually go over the show, review the show, and enjoy the show. And to me, it's like, you know what? Yeah, I might do some more Raw reviews here and there and, and see if you guys like, 
you know, the raw reviews and stuff like that and see where it goes from here. But, yeah, as a fan last night, I was actually really entertained. I think Raw right now and, and just WWE as a whole right now are firing, all, firing on all cylinders. And as a fan, I'm definitely enjoying the show for both Raw and definitely looking forward to SmackDown this week. So, uh, but with that being said, this is my review of Monday Night Raw. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classic. Peace.